Welcome, everyone, to the Zorich Podcast. I am Chris Zorich, and on today's show, we have George Buscera of Shake Down the Thunder Sports Podcast. George, welcome. How you doing, Chris? I'm Thank doing very well, you. sir. So, first of all, explain to the folks what the Shake Down the Thunder Sports Podcast is first. But then after that, I want you to talk about how you started it, how you got into it. Tell me about your team because not every sports fan eventually ends up with a creden- with a sports credential, like hanging out at games and stuff like that. So you have this amazing journey. I want folks to know about it. So first of all, tell us what tell us about the Shake Down the Thunder Sports Podcast. So uh, Shake Down the Thunder Sports started in April of 2018. And um, it was uh, myself coming off of a uh, of another um, blog um, that I covered for Notre Dame Sports, and um, we've grown over the past two years. Um, I have uh, I have one additional writer. I have a couple amazing photographers um, that like to uh, be on the sidelines when they're allowed to at Notre Dame football games. Okay. Um, we, we also hang out on Twitter. We also hang out on Instagram and, um, it's a, uh, it's a fresh, it's a fresh voice of, of Notre Dame sports. It's, it's just not about Notre Dame football. Um, we cover all sports that are Notre Dame. So, so that's, what's kind of interesting. A lot of, a lot of other, um, um, blogs out there, a lot of other podcasts, they, they only do football. So why did you choose to kind of encompass other sports? I wanted, I wanted a, a special niche um, of the blog market. Um, it's a long time between the end of the season in December <laughs> and, getting to, and getting to the uh, days of spring ball there in April. So, um, and, and, and there's more sports in Notre Dame than, than just football. It's oh, just there is? Game. There is? I didn't know that. Right? <laughs> um, it's, it's incredible to see, um, to go out there and see, you know, the men's and women's basketball team, um, get to go see the hockey, the hockey team play and do their thing against some great rivals, actually. And um, we get the chance to uh, get out there in the spring and, and catch some women's lacrosse and men's lacrosse. Um, unfortunately, this year, we did not get a chance to cover the entire season of spring sports sure. um, because of that um, thing called the pandemic. Sure, sure. But um, we, we try we try and do as much as we can to uh, give positive press um, about the Notre Dame sports. So, so tell us a little bit about your team. Tell us about the other uh-huh. folks that are that are working with you. Um, I have a guy named uh, Ben Walters. He's a he's a he's a writer. Okay. Um, I have Lisa Kelly. Um, she's an admin for the page, but um, she's also one of my photographers. I have a gentleman named John Tolan, and he's a photographer for us as well. And um, I was actually going to be picking up a new photographer this year. His name is Robert Rees. But uh, unfortunately, I cannot use his expert expertise this season. So uh, it's, a, it's a very small, you know, it doesn't pay the bills, but it's that breakaway from my full-time job that I can dive in, in, into a, uh, a stress relief of Notre Dame sports. And, and, and also – have a little fun. So kind of explain to folks watching this incredible journey of literally being a fan and then ending up with the opportunity to get press credentials. Because this is unheard of. I mean, it's not like you just kind of walked in and said, hey, I got a blog. I want to cover some sports. Let me in. So um, I I was on a corporate move a couple back seven years ago into Southwest Indiana, became unemployed. Um, the doors opened for me to move to South Bend. Um, I uh, rejected the first job because I couldn't get the job in South Bend. They wanted to move me to a, a, a place out there in Ohio. I'm like, nope, that's not going to work. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you know, what's out there? The Buckeyes? You don't want to go out there. Oh, please. I, that that would have been – that's all I would have seen around me would have been Buckeyes. <laughs> so um, – the opportunity came a couple of weeks later with the same company and they said, George, the money fits and the jobs could be in the South Bend. I'm like, sold. Let's go. There you go. 
So uh, that, that was the quick journey there to South Bend. Um, and then, you know, I went to my first game back in uh, 20, 2017, 2016. And this is just as a fan, right? I mean, you're not, you know. Yeah. Okay. And, and I was sitting there looking up those press boxes. I said, I always wonder what the view is going to be like from there. And, you know, because it's air conditioned, there's food. You know, it, it, but it, but but in the stands, to me, it was it's how you experience the game. You know, I was I'm always a believer of being with the fans. So you know, being there and uh, you know out in there in, in the um, stands was pretty awesome. But uh, the there was an opportunity that came along. I had uh, I had met Lisa Kelly online on, through uh, through one of the pages. Okay, you have to explain who Lisa Kelly is because she's like this amazing historian for Notre Dame. So you kind of yeah. tell folks. So Lisa Kelly was up doing some research at Notre Dame one weekend. And um, I had told her that I had this connection to Notre Dame and I wanted to show her, you know, a lot of people say they have a connection, but I was like, I, I got to show you what I have. And she was just floored. So uh, we definitely, we, we became friends. I mean, it falls into the magic of Notre Dame. Right. Our lady always brings people together in different ways, people you never would have met. And all of a sudden, these people have relationships. So a um, couple of things went along. There was a story that was breaking about the time Notre Dame had gone four and seven or four and eight from that horrible season. Unfortunately, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that's a that's a rough one. And then um, I had wrote this story it was going to go as a Facebook post. And Lisa was reading, and she's like, you need to come write for the blog that I work on. And I was like, cool. So my wife my wife will tell you, George, I don't know where you got this writing pro S from. When you were in college, I was I was the 40-year-old graduate. I graduated when I was 42 years old. Nice, nice. So um, she's like, you, can't, you couldn't write for a lick. I always had to double-check your papers. And, <laughs> you know, you know, it was always awful. She goes, where did this come from? I'm like, I don't know. So that's that was the journey of me becoming the writer. I uh, started writing the articles for um, another group, and uh, one day there was a situation where I got a Dear John letter, and it's like we're going a different direction. I got fired from a job I didn't get paid. For. <laughs> How does that happen? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, I I had to get ready for work, and I'm all frustrated because I just coming off. I had just come off the, the men going to the Frozen Four in hockey. Nice. Covering that. Women just winning the national championship, okay? And who, so, of course. So, so here we are with all this great coverage and all this writing into that into this group. And then I get told they're going in a different direction. Wow. So by the end of the day that I got that newsletter, I had my name chosen. I had a web page. And the rest <laughs> is history. So that's that's how we that's how we came to be. It was all through the magic of meeting somebody like Lisa doing research at Notre Dame. Okay, so now I mean, when you think about shake down the thunder, I mean, is it? I mean, is it a place where people are bashing each other, or I mean, are, are folks kind of I mean appreciative of kind of? The, the whole Notre Dame experience, or like, I mean, explain kind of what the relationship is with uh, the fans on there. I would say that I have a really good relationship um, with the followers on my page. Okay. Um, I'm, I don't believe in censoring people in their comments. Um, I look at the comments. I try to. I try to keep it within reason. Um, I try not to let people bash the students. I'm, I'm a strong believer of not bashing the student athletes. Um, Why is they, that? They are there for an education, and they get the opportunity to play a sport. That's so great. Well, I wish every fan understood that, uh, that these are 18-year-old kids, and 18-year-old kids sometimes screw up. So if somebody drops a pass or throws an interception, he's 18. Yep. You know, and, and I mean, I, I know women's soccer, women's sports, you know, she's 18. It's okay if she misses a free throw. I mean – we put so much pressure on these student athletes. It's really unfair. Yeah. And, and, and really what it comes down to Chris 
is the fact that they are there to, to please the fans. I mean, they're there on a four-year job interview trying to do their best to get to the next level. Sure. And at the same time, you'll hear these guys every single time say, we have the best fans in the business. Right, right. So, you know, you, you got to give them the love. Let them make mistakes and let them learn because I'm not perfect. Who am I to, who am I to bash them? So, uh, you know, I, I, I give them the, the chance to learn and improve. And they've only lost in, in, under Ian Book. Everyone, you know, is, is on Zion Ian Book. The kids only lost three games. I mean, and, and literally the way people sound, they, they, they're, they're acting like, you know, Notre Dame has lost like 10 games or something like that. It's, it's, it's everybody just wanting to get back to the promised land. That, that's what it comes down to. Everybody wants to get back to that national championship. These kids want to win a national championship. It's just a different. It's just different from what it used to be in the arena of football. So sure, you can go ahead and say it. it's it's a lot different, Chris, than when you did it 20, thirty years ago. You can go ahead and say it. I'm that old. You can, you can say that, <laughs> Chris. You wouldn't trade it for the world, though. That is true, sir. That that is definitely true. So let's talk a little bit about the the fact that the, the common thread between. The both of us is Lisa Kelly. Yes. Um, I mean the the fact that, and I've told you this, and we I was fortunate to have her on a show, on my show, and I know she was on your show as well. Um, not only is she a great interview, she is this plethora of just Notre Dame knowledge. Oh, it's insane. You you would think that she was born into the lineage of Notre Dame. I mean, the fact that her dad graduated from Notre Dame, but you would think that it goes deeper than that. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, her love for that school is, is just incredible. And she, she, she thrives on the sport. She thrives on the energy that comes off that campus on, on a Saturday afternoon. Yes. And on top of that, she owns a zoo. So, I mean, how cool is that? Right. Exactly. I mean, you know, author, you know, internet does internet sales, and and they own a zoo. Not one zoo, but two zoos. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, our life, our life's a zoo without having the zoo animals. Oh God, yeah. And, it, and it, that in itself is a book. So, I mean, she's written other books on Notre Dame players and kind of you know their experiences. Yep. She needs to write a book kind of on her own, talking about. You know, she comes home one day and her husband's like, honey, I, I got a zoo. You know, I mean, that, that is hilarious. Oh, absolutely hilarious. I, I, I don't know what would happen to me if I came home that day and told my wife that I bought a zoo. A zoo? I, I mean, I, I got in trouble for bringing home a dog. I mean, let alone a zoo, you know? Exactly. Exactly. That's a, that's, that's just a different, um, that's just a different choice of career paths. <laughs> All right. So I asked. Everybody this ask players this. I mean, I ask fans this. Um, how did you get started being a Notre Dame fan? I mean, were you, you know, five years old, grandfather statue for the TV, or you read about it? Like, like, like what how did you become a Notre Dame fan? Well, you know, it, it's 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 everyone like says, you know, I sat down and watched Notre Dame on Saturday with my grandparents and you know, then then and then I started getting a little bit older and then the stories start coming out. Because they're not going to tell you stories when you're younger, because you're not going to remember these. Sure. And this so, is weird. so. so what, what, where did you grow up? And I mean, I do you, you were you in the Midwest and around the Notre Dame area? Or? I was on the East Coast. I, I am. I was born and bred in uh, in Connecticut. Oh, okay. All right. Nice. Nice. They call it the Valley. Okay. There you go. <laughs> the Valley boy. And um, so we're sitting around one Saturday afternoon. We're just chit chatting. After my grandmother had said it at this point, she goes, looks at my grandfather. She goes, if Lou Holtz wasn't married, I would divorce you and marry him in a heartbeat. So uh, my grandmother was kind of crazy um, in that aspect about Notre Dame football as well. So is that when your hand shut up and said, first of all, who is Lou Holtz and what's Notre Dame football? I, 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 was, I was starting to understand what her love for Notre Dame was. <laughs> Um, the family tie, though, to Notre Dame runs a little bit deeper. Yeah, this is very interesting. I love this story. 
So the the stories start coming out and they go, well, we, we, we should be telling you some things about your lineage and what, you know, what the fam where the family's been. You're like uh, Michigan fans, like what, what what what's going on here? Exactly, and we're when we're watching a Notre Dame football game. What's what what are we why are we changing conversation there? You know, Grandpa. <laughs> so not. So and my grandfather goes, well, Newt Rockney and your great grandfather were best friends. That's crazy. And I was like. Newt Rockney, you know, you know, I mean, as a double take, really, you know, the, the great, the greatest coach of all time, some will say. So, so how old are you at this point? Probably 12, 13. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So just have to have cognitive, you know, <laughs> understanding as to what's going on here. Sure. And so the story progresses, you know, your great grandfather played on the, on the, was on the practice team. Newt was on the, on the football team. Um, they were, they would on track and stuff together and oh, but oh, we'll add to your story. New intro canoe int introduced your great grandfather to your great grandmother. <laughs> so literally, if not for Notre Dame football, you would not be here. If it wasn't for Notre Dame football, among other things, we're, we're not having this conversation. <laughs> right now. Oh, I, 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 I can't even imagine what, what, or what I would be like, you know what I'm trying to say? So, um, yeah, so the there's people that say they have ties to Notre Dame program. Um, according to the Hesburgh um, archivists, there's like, you have a direct lineage, you know, a direct tie to New, to New, to New Rockney. So. Uh, and and there's, there's, there's a piece of history that uh, that's in your family that, um, is is beyond like, I mean, it's not a jersey, you know, it's not a photograph, I mean, it's not some shoes. Can you no. share with us what it is? Um, back in 1912, <laughs> okay, we're, we're we're talking 108 years ago, <laughs> okay. Um, they're having a football banquet, and they and everything was done nice back in those days, right? They they made nice little programs. They had the menu. He had the team captains listed. And on the inside, and I'm looking at this stuff as I was going through my great grandfather's footlocker. I'm like, oh my God. It was it was Knut Rockney's autograph, by the way, the largest one on the page. <laughs> Everybody else must have had a right around his signature because right. he picked up a page and a half. So, and there was no mistaking it when I showed that to the folks at Hesburgh. They were like, "That's crazy." So um, they had they had never seen anything like that, you know, come through the doors. So that is my tie to um, Notre Dame, and it's in my blood. So I'm assuming you've 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 tried to kind of run this by the the uh, the ticket department and said, you know, hey. You know, I got this lineage. What's up? Can I get some tickets? I mean, I'm assuming you, you try to do that at least. If not, you should. I did. Um, I, I my my intention of going to the Hesburgh Library was one, getting it priced and appraised. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And then I was like, hey, I got this really big deep of Notre Dame history here, right in front of you. Not only the this football banquet, but I got the yearbooks going back to three of the four years of my great grandfather attending the university. I mean, are they like, I mean, were they just in a box? I mean, was it like, I mean, is there a box around them now or? They were in a foot locker. And was it like damp? I mean, are all the pages, you know, it's perfect? Condition. Really? Beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful condition. So uh, you, you can imagine that was one of those attic finds, you know, you, you, you look at American pickers. <laughs> and, and here I am. I'm doing the picking in my in my grandparents' attic. This is after they had passed away. Um, we were all allowed to take something from the attic space. As soon as I found those documents, I checked out. <laughs> everybody. I'm yeah, out here. Everything else, I'm good. I'm good. You have everything else. George, George has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was just that was just a crazy piece of uh, of history to find. 
Okay, you're listening to the Zords podcast with George Becerra from the Shakedown the Thunder podcast. So take on Shakedown the Thunder Sports podcast. So we're going to make this transition of kind of being a fan yep. and having some lineage. Now, now you've made it to South Bend through work. And give us all the details because, I mean, you kind of – Gloss over the story about how you ended up with the opportunity to kind of cover the game. So, I mean, this is not, you just didn't walk into South Bend and say, Yeah, I want to cover the game. You know, give me a pass. I mean, what was that experience like? And how long did you have to wait? I actually had to wait an entire season. Um, what was required of me um, by the um, athletic department or the SIDs, as we'll call them. Okay. Um, was for me to run, I call it a run the gamut. Um, they wanted to see my style. They wanted to see how I interacted with other folks, you know, in the press box. Um, my professionalism in my writing. Okay. Um, because they don't want to let you in if you're going to be just be bad and it's all junk that's going out the door, you know. Sure. They're not going to sure. do anything to tarnish their product. And, and I don't disagree with that. Um. So the discussion was if your guy covers hockey, men's and women's basketball, and then we'll discuss the football credential the following season. But now there are other people covering these sports, obviously, right? Yes. So, I mean, how did you fit in kind of in that hierarchy? I mean, did they say, hey, this is just a test run? Were they throwing this stuff in the garbage, do you know? Or were they saying, hey, you know, this is fit to print? No, this is what they were looking for. They, they what I was what I was putting out there for them, and what they were reviewing. You know what, what I was writing is was on par with the message that they try to deliver. That's terrific. That's the and that's I mean like literally you just walked in and said, "Hey, this is what I want to do." Um. Well, the, if you want to go back, I mean, I guess what happened was the um, editor of the blog I was working for, he kind of greased the skids and says, "Hey, we want to give the guy a try." And they, um, they, they opened the doors and just said, do the right things, make the right relationships. Um, because in, in the business, it's, it's all about relationships. I, I tried very hard to make personal relationships with every single one of the other writers that are up in, that, in those press boxes. Sure, sure. Well, but then you also got, I mean, and this is, I mean, people have to understand this. Not every blogger gets press credentials. Yep. So, so that's really what's kind of interesting is that you go from a fan to being a blogger to, you know, actually being able to, like, sit on press row and be part of the press corps. Yep. I mean, what was the biggest game you had credentials for? Oh, Chris, my first game, my, my first game in the football press box, mm -hmm. Michigan. Oh, my God. Opening day, opening, opening game of that season was Michigan. Wow. So <laughs> I, I, I kind of, I kind of got christened. I got christened with a, with a night game against a big, what people will say is a rival. Okay. And a stadium that was electrified. Um, I, I, I couldn't believe, I, I couldn't believe that I was there. That is awesome. That is, that is literally, that is, I mean, you know, it's one thing, being a fan and, and, you know, if you play football, there's a chance you may have a, have an opportunity to go to Notre Dame, but after a while, you know, you're not, so you may go to other school, but being able to kind of live this dream as an elder statesman, let's say, I mean, that, that's awesome. And it's like, literally you've, you've talked to, I mean, you, you, you've hung out, you've been around people that have been doing this all their lives. And now, yeah. you know, in the last couple of years, you have this opportunity. I I stay humbled. Um, there there were some folks that, like last season, they didn't get into the press box, and I said, "There's nothing I can do to help you, but all you can do is be humble and enjoy the time that you have." Sure. Because you just don't know when it's going to get taken away for whatever reason. You know, and and this kind of this year was kind of that situation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was going to ask you, so well, what's the situation this year? Do you have a chance to, to be in the press box this year? Or? Unfortunately, they cut their seats by like 75 to 80% really? this year. 
Oh my gosh. We went from a hundred something seats down to twenty eight. You're kidding me. No, no, it was they it was a big swath cut because everyone in the press box now needs to be social distanced. I mean, are they literally like measuring six feet and saying, okay, well, we can fit one here. We have to miss, you know, minus three. We got another one. I mean, how does that wow? Yep. I I, I saw the pictures when we were doing our uh, preseason discussion with the university. Um, they actually showed the example of the spread um, from from desk to desk in the press box. Wow. So, 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 so let's, let's go back on your experience here. So you're at Michigan. You're in the press box. Now, for those of you who have not been in the press box before, like the number one, the number one rule, and I'm sure they will, they will take away your press credentials if this happens, you cannot cheer – for either team that's absolutely correct i mean that is just the absolute not i mean they, you just do not do that and then literally if you do they yank it off your, i mean they don't do this but i'm sure they would just yank it off and, and take it away but it's interesting because um I, i've been up there a couple of times because i was going to do like an interview on the radio or something like that at halftime and i'm so used to kind of being a little animated mm -hmm. and my first time up here, I was like, oh, it's dead up there. They had a lot of food. They had a great food up there. But I was like, man, you know, this kind of sucks. Why, why are people watching the game? And I was younger. And they are like, uh, this is the press box. Like, you, you can't cheer here. So it's interesting. So the idea that you're at the Michigan game and you cannot cheer even though you're a fan. I mean, what was that experience like? So it's, it's, actually, it's actually very interesting. Um, first thing they tell you, is you do not wear anything with an with an ND logo on it. So you are you are you are you are neutral, okay? Okay. Um, the second part is I think this is the best quote that comes before the game. Um, this is just a reminder this is a working press box. There is no chairing during the game. <laughs> so that kind of sets the tone for for you know for, for what's going on. Sure, sure. But um, it's being being in the press side of this, you you really and it's the kind of the way that I carry myself now is that you don't go around asking for autographs. You don't go around doing this or that. Um, you're you're in your business. Sure. And so it's it's as much as you want to think of it as a an opportunity that you're going to go have a great time. You can have a great time. But your the things that thought that you're, you're that you want to do are resonating on what you're typing out on Twitter and Facebook. That's kind of like that's kind of like your your offset to cheering is that you're you're putting that information hastily into the computer right. so, right. so everyone knows what's going on. All right, that is that's insane. I mean, so I mean. The first score, I mean, great play. I mean, were you just kind of, did you have to go like in the stairwell? It's like, yes, it's great. Did you pitch yourself? I mean, I mean, what was the experience like? I, I, after, after the game, when the, when the clock struck zero, I was like, did this just really happen? <laughs> because we all know you don't trust the clock until there's all zeros on the board, right? Yes, of course. That's what players say. You, you never, ever, you never trust what's going to happen until there's all zeros on the board. And play has stopped. Um, so it definitely, uh, it definitely was uh, was a moment that I was like, "Am I really here?" It, it, it was just it was, that was just it was just a moment. And I can remember everyone else around me said, "George, you just saw one hell of a game for your so, first game. Yeah. That's that's awesome." All right, yep. so, so now we, we spent some time in the press box. So yeah. talk to us about kind of that first experience on campus. Um, when, when, when I talk to players or I talk to the people, they, they had the Prado, touchdown Jesus, whatever it was, but kind of walk us through kind of what that experience, like your, your first time there. Like this is, I mean, you've seen photos. Yeah. You got the, the history of your family at 12 years old. I mean, so, so what, what went on your, your, the first time you hit campus? Well, you got to come in Notre Dame Avenue, right? You, you can't you can't come in any other way. <laughs> can't come in through the back. No, no, no. You, you, you learn the back roads afterwards. <laughs> you got to go in Notre Dame Avenue. Um, 
I guess the first time going in, it was like, oh my God, there's the dome, you know, and this, because that's the, that's the symbol. I mean, whenever there's a game or whatever, the, and anything in, in the media, only thing that they show is the administration building right. and in the dome. Um, but my first time on campus after that, it, it felt surreal. Um, it felt kind of magical. I, and I've heard, you know, different players that, you know, that you've had on about their first time experience. Um, I had the same feeling. I just, it, it just felt comfortable. Um, and I guess I understand the home under the dome nomenclature because it's so welcoming. You know, it's funny because, I mean, people have different experiences. And, and you know, when you're there, it, and I don't know if it's like that now. I mean, you started in 2017, but the idea that you, you kind of take it for granted. You know, you walk past it, you know, or you're there every day. I mean, you know, you've been up in the press box. And, and maybe even now, like, you don't really realize how great it is until you miss it. Chris, if you had told me on March 23rd that was going to be my last day on campus, I have not been back to campus since that women's lacrosse game. Uh, wow. Wow. So I, I, I have too much respect for what's going on over there. Sure. And, um, and no, I, I do want to get back to the grotto and, you know, just be on campus. But there's too much going on over there right now. And, I, I just I just don't want to you know bring anything into the mix. That's fair enough. Uh, we're gonna take a little break, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Zorch Podcast with our guest this evening, George Buchera from the Shake Down the Thunder Podcast. If you'd like to watch this interview and our other, other interviews, please check out my YouTube page at Chris Zorch 50 and click subscri the subscribe button. So you've had a chance to be in the press box. Mm -hmm. Were you ever on the field before a game? Or have you ever been on the field in general? Um, the only time that I had been on the field before that is when I paid my $15 for the stadium tour. <laughs> and I, I tell my wife, I go, that's the best $15 I ever spent. So please tell me that that, that $15 goes to like some charity or something like that. I mean, Notre Dame is not trying to break people's bank and like taking 15 bucks from them, right? I couldn't tell you, but it was the best walking tour that I ever paid to go on. Well, but it's also kind of different because, I mean, you have a chance to kind of experience it from a, a different angle. Yep. And, again, I just think this journey is so amazing. I mean, you know, who goes from fan to the press box and, you know, has the respect of being, you know, a writer? And I think that's interesting because, you know, I've had other folks on who are fans, who are bloggers, but this is such a different experience. And it just kind of shows your dedication to, you know, what you enjoy. And that's obviously Notre Dame athletics. So along those lines, you've had a chance to interview folks on your podcast me, I uh, haven't been asked yet, so I don't know why I haven't been on. I mean, I asked you first, so, I mean, what's, what's, what's going on there? You're coming soon. You're coming soon. So, of course, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you who is your best interview of all time. Oh, boy. Man. Well, I, 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 have, to, I have to go. Um, I would say best athlete was probably Clint Johnson. I just had him on a couple weeks ago. Okay. All right. Um, but I think Lisa Kelly, she just brings so much to the lore, as you said earlier, of Notre Dame. 
Okay, now now you're just saying that because she's awesome and she's probably watching, but I'm just giving her a hard time. That's all. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I I would say, I mean, my my, my podcast is is just kicking off. Um, my I would say probably my my first podcast was Augie. Um, that was something to help get his business going. So sure. So was, I'll explain to folks who Augie is because this guy, I mean, he's awesome, and he has this little shop in South Bend, and like literally, it's a stone's throw away from the stadium, and he has the best memorabilia you could ever. Want, I'm sure. He has a he has a a collection that fits all in this little store. Um, besides the store, it's just going in there and hearing the stories from Augie um, talking about the past, and you know he, the guy loves Notre Dame. And oh, uh, beyond, so I'm, little, if I'm gonna give him a little plug. www.augieslockerroom.com Oh, absolutely. Please, please. I'm going to type it in. All right. It's going to be a second. So you're going to have to talk a little bit because I'm going to try to type it in and uh, put it on there for a second. You can definitely use um, your support um, with the campus being shut down and stuff like that going on. Um, Augie can definitely use a visit or if you can check out his stuff on on the web. All right. What is it again? I'm sorry about that. www. Yep. Dot Augie's locker room. Dot com. Gotcha. Thank you. So this is kind of on the spur of the moment here. So let's see if it works. This is one of those off, 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 off topic moments. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? You did it, dude. And I typed it correctly. Oh my wow. gosh, that's amazing. All right. Now, so, so let's, let's, oh, here, you know what? Yeah, let me let me look it up a little bit, but yeah. I'm gonna, so let me tell you my Augie story. Sure. So, uh, but I can't write and type at the same time. So hold on a second here. Uh, okay. So, way back when, when. Uh, God, I think it was maybe probably 10 years ago. But we would sign autographs before games. And the first time I met him literally had to be when he was waiting in line at one of these autograph places, right? Or one, one of these, it was one of the games. And Tony Rice is really good friends with him. I know Reggie is, Rocket, all these guys who come in and sign autographs. Yep. He waits in line patiently. And I mean, this was so I used to work at Notre Dame like 2008 around that time. Mm -hmm. And maybe even before then, on game day, or excuse me, the, the, uh, the, uh, the day before a game, um, I mean, I, I would be signing autographs and he comes like, hey, so we're hanging out. And he threw out this big lunk of just, and he had the most interesting stuff. Like, it wasn't like, oh, here's a photo. You know, it was like, oh, here's the seats from the old stadium. Yep. Or, you know, here's the, the a ticket from the National Championship game in 88. Or, you know, here's a drawing from an artist. I mean, it was, it was just so interesting that it, it wasn't just your regular run-of-the-mill kind of autograph stuff. Yep. And so the, the fact that now... He's actually been able to to have a place where I'm sure he's dying. I mean, just oh. because of what, what's happened and yeah, yeah, it'd be great if, if people can help him out um, because you know with people not traveling and not coming out to games and where's the first people to go on game weekend? Majority of people go to Augie's locker room and walk around and try to come home with something for the weekend. Sure, it, it, and I'm sure even if people didn't go and buy anything. I'm sure the relationships, you know, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm sure he's he's loving, you know, Notre Dame football again, but, you know, it's those conversations, you know, and I'm sure people come back for every home game and they make it stop. It's like a tradition, right? They'll go to the grotto, they'll go to Augie's locker room, right? Yep. And they'll hang out and talk to him, 
you know, maybe have a cup of coffee, whatever it is. And, you know, the, the idea that, you know, here's another historian, right? But it's coming from the opposite. I can't imagine the stories he has about some of the things that he has in his store. I've never been to a store. Have you? I have. I, I've actually made a couple of nice purchases from his store. There you go. See? See? You know, and it's funny because it's like, I mean, this is the special part of Notre Dame I think is so fascinating is that, I mean, you have someone who loves Notre Dame so much, Notre Dame football so much, and he literally took waiting in line, getting autographs from folks, and kind of made that into, like, you know, his dream business. And, you know, good or bad, I mean, he was able to do it. And I'm sure there's a whole bunch of people out of here that would have loved to have done that, and he's actually doing it. So, you know, if there are folks that are traveling to South Bend, um, you know, waiting or actually going to the game, maybe going to a, a restaurant or something like that, please swing by Augie's Lock. I'm sure that the address, I don't have the address, but I'm sure it's on there, uh, it's on his website. You can check it out. That'd, that'd be great. Tell them, tell them that uh, Chris and George sent you. Um, maybe you I'll might get a – I'll charge you double. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so which kind of brings us to the, to the next question. So – what what is your most prized possession that you have that's Notre Dame memorabilia outside of kind of what you, what your family what what's your grandfather um, had? Um, I would say the other thing um, is when Canoe passed, um, my great grandfather being so close to Canoe. Um, my great grandfather had wrote his eulogy um, on, on rice paper, by the way. Yep, and you can see where it's the hand cross out. There was no white out. There was no go back and you know electronically fix it. Um, I have the original, his original that he wrote about Knut's eulogy. You're kidding me. Hundred and hundred and eight hundred see. It was thirty was 1937. So you're talking just under 100 years old. I mean, it's just about 86 years old, 83 years old. But that's, I mean, that's like a museum piece. Like, like that's like, that should be, oh, or maybe maybe you could trade this for the right thing. That's how you would do that. But maybe put it on loan to like the, 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 the Notre Dame Museum. If there was like a Notre Dame Museum, um, you know, on campus somewhere, I mean, because that's literally part of not only Notre Dame lore, but like literally Notre Dame football lore as well. Yeah. Um, when Augie had had read the the eulogy that I, you know, that he that was written, he had actually said, it goes, George, he goes, some of those words are actually, I believe they're in um, Newt Rockney All American. You're kidding me. So um, that's that's how floored Augie was. It's it's hard to get Augie to be in awe over something. He's like George. I I, I can't even tell you what this is worth. God. That, well, but but it's kind of interesting because it's you know it's I mean it's part of you. It's part mm -hmm. of your family history. Yes. And so it's kind of more. I mean, I'm sure you would never let that go. But you know, it's something that that it's literally. A relates to you well not even that but it, it relates to you to kind of that era you know and, and that person in the history in, in history in general but in the history of Notre Dame lore yeah actually what I'm trying to do is part of my research with with having all this stuff um seeing that my great-grandfather and great-grandmother actually got married at St. Joseph's Church in South Bend uh-huh I'm hoping I can find out who was in the wedding party because if him and Canute were as tight as they, you know, are saying, I'm sure there's got to be something they're saying, you know, that he was part of the wedding party. That would be really, really interesting. Wow. Wow. I, and I didn't realize, you know, we were just doing um, family tree stuff last year, and we stumbled upon it in, in the family tree um, software, 
And they're like, they're like, wait a second, South Saint Saint Joseph, South Bend, Indiana. That's twenty five minutes from where I live now. So you talk about this, talk about things coming full circle in your life. It really has. This 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 coming and being able to do this is one of those moments in life that it's come full circle. I, I'm supposed to be here. Well, it's kind of interesting because, I mean, had you taken the job, if they were paying more, a lot more, you may be like doing like the the the, uh, the podcast for Ohio State or something. Um, no. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, it's funny how things turn out, you know? I mean, it's it's – and I'm sure when, when that first job, when when it wasn't paying what you want, I'm sure you're like, damn, you know, you're kind of a little pissed a little bit, and then all of a sudden this came. Out. When you're unemployed for four months and in South Bend, Indiana, is dangled in front of you. <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> all right, you're listening to the Zorch Podcast with our guest George Bichera. From the Shakedown of Thunder Sports Podcast. Um, so, so let's kind of save the last 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, talk about the team. Right. So this is something that you cover. Yes, sir. Um, and I'm sure you're getting paid loads and loads of money. Um, so I mean, how do you find the time? I mean, because you, you're you're literally going up against guys who literally have stuff in the paper on a daily basis. Yep. So, I mean, what do you offer? I mean, what's what do you do that's different from, let's say, the beat? And I know it's 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 a different concept. Yep. But I mean, I, and I'm sure you know some of the beat writers. But I mean, having the chance to kind of be on their level, kind of be one of their peers. I mean, how is that? Well, it's it's really if you're if you're talking about how how am I different from those guys, mm -hmm. um, I, I I I have the sports aspect and I try to cover the team to the best of my ability with the day to day ins and outs of what's going on. Um, but along with the sports at Notre Dame, there's fans, okay, and there's fans that have things going on in their life, um, and we kind of look at things from Another perspective, um, from the perspective of beyond playing sports, um, because Notre Dame is there, and it, 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 I think it goes back to the Father Ted way of thinking of of doing things for other people, right. and 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 and, be, and and giving back. Um, so the other part that we try to do is we try to look at what's going on outside of sports, and what fans or, you know, what organizations are out there that need, that need, you know, bolstering it or need, or need some type of support. Okay. Um, so uh, we, 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 we look at the sports and we're appreciative for the sports. We also got to remember that life is real and to try and keep the human element into what's going on in the day to act day to day activity of the sports world. Because not everyone has the opportunities that I have, and I want to be able to give back to those that can't maybe get out here to Notre Dame, and you know, learn their story, kind of like what you're doing with us today, right? You're, you're in, you you want to see from a different side of it right. of how they're impacted by by Notre Dame. So I know how players feel. How do fans feel about not being able to kind of cheer on their team? Uh, how do fans feel about not being able to cheer on their team? It's, it, it's, a, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of lost there. I, it's a different situation. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's really a different situation. Um, in, in, in the, in the perspective of, I, I, it's my job. You know, in this case, it's my job. This is that's my work environment, and it's about being the professional. So, uh, it's 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 very different. It, it, it's very different in that aspect. I can't imagine being in the area 
on Saturdays and not having crazy traffic, not having the restaurants be filled. I mean, it's just like a, it's literally, I would assume, I've never, I haven't been down there around game time now, but I assume it's like what South Bend is on a regular basis. Nowadays, um, you know, you, you complain about the traffic on different occasions of what's going on. You can always tell when it's a game day because all the stores are filling up. The restaurants are, you got to think an hour and a half ahead of when you want to go to dinner because everyone else is filtering in. Or if sure. you're going to go out to dinner with some folks from town, you know to book a reservation two days before. <laughs> so um, the things you take for granted right now of of not seeing this, this foot traffic, it, it, the whole economic thing is just going to turn this area upside down right now. It's definitely a, a different situation. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. It's, so it's just it's just like another day. So give me your thoughts on Notre Dame joining the ACC. I think it's a I think for this year it's a good thing. Okay. Um you've heard the guys on college game day come out and say Notre Dame save college football this season. <laughs> First of all, getting a positive out of college game day, you're going to take that and cash the check right away. <laughs> that okay. should be their, their new ad all season. Exactly. Um, but also at the same point, um, it's it's given, the, it's given Notre Dame a chance to fill in the schedule. Um, I think the, the perspective is Notre Dame's not going to do anything that's bad for Notre Dame. They're not going to put them. They know. They know. They know how to protect the brand. They know how to protect what is right for the university. Mm -hmm. um, everything. It's like everything laid out on campus. There's a purpose for everything and where it is. Sure. So, everything that Notre Dame does, even in athletics, is done with a purpose. And given the chance of not having to have a season. Um, and the ACC welcoming them then them in into the um, you know into the into the conference for a season, I think it's good for Notre Dame. I think it's very good for the ACC. Oh, it's great for the ACC, please. please. So um, I think it's going to make all those teams in the ACC better. Um, I don't think that Notre Dame stays past this season, um, despite what some people are saying. Oh, they should stay and all this other stuff. Notre Dame has had a pretty gar darn good model for just a few years of, of being independent. And folks should remember that the Big Ten, um, especially Michigan, did everything in their power to prevent Notre Dame from going into the Big Ten um, back in the early days. Sure. So if there's anyone that forced Notre Dame to go independent, you can thank Big Ten <laughs> for – for and, and, and the coaches at Michigan for bad mouthing the, the program not to let him into the Big Ten conference. Well, when I heard, I mean, when, when all this stuff was going on and um, Notre Dame was kind of in limbo, um, you know, I really had no idea what Notre Dame was was going to do. Um, I obviously wanted them to be able to play, but in a safe environment. And then, and, and really, it started to to get me thinking, like. I mean, how special this this independence thing was. Oh yeah, and the fact that yeah, you know, I mean, we hear it all the time as players, but until you see kind of folks aligning, this conference aligning with bowls, and Jack Swarbrick, the athletic director, being able to be in those rooms, sitting sitting with conference um, officials. And knowing that Notre Dame's decision matters is really great. And I don't want to sound arrogant, but, I mean, Notre Dame's independence really helps college football. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and, I mean – there's you you have your own rules you can, you you're able to do what you want within that independent you can, you also have a better chance to schedule better tougher games sure because sure. Let, let's be honest when you look at the SEC right you have Alabama 
you have Auburn, you have you you want to throw a couple other teams in there, but in the end, who walks who walks out of there every year with with that with that bid? You know, I think this year Notre Dame being in the ACC makes the other teams try harder. Every week's going to be a conference game, except for except for this weekend, of course. <laughs> Um, is a conference game, and every win matters. So, and two ACC teams are not going to go to the college football playoffs. I don't care what kind of love Kirk Herbstreit tries to give Notre Dame and Clemson. One of those two teams are going. You're not going to get two teams out of the ACC. Well, which is interesting because that just puts more pub on the Clemson-Notre Dame, more pressure on the Clemson-Notre Dame game, right? But – the idea that I mean, when was the last time Notre Dame played Duke? Uh, I mean, two, three years ago, two years ago. Yeah, we won't talk about that one though. When they they lost about a field goal, we that's you know but the idea that Notre Dame is able to go to these smaller markets. Absolutely. I mean, is huge, right? And, and obviously, this is before COVID and everything, but being able to bring let's say Notre Dame to West Virginia or to uh, Wake Forest. Yep. That doesn't happen very often. And I, I think they hold like 40,000, maybe 50,000 at uh, Wake Forest. I mean, that's not a place where, where Notre Dame is going to go. Well, it was actually going to be a lot less if they played over in Annapolis. That was right. exactly right. right. 30,000. And, and, and being able to hold on to those traditions with Navy, um, you know, USC, mm-hmm. I mean, these are games that we looked forward to playing. And you know, if Notre Dame is not independent, I mean, USC will always play an independent Notre Dame, right? Absolutely. If you now, if Notre Dame, let's say in the future, Notre Dame is forced to join the ACC, right? I mean, who are your non-conference games going to be? USC, Navy, and Stanford. Right. I mean, that's all constantly, right? I mean, you aren't going to see Notre Dame having a chance to play SEC teams. You know, you aren't going to see Notre Dame have a chance to play Big 12 teams. No. And that's really what I I love about the the, the independence part. But so – and obviously, you're kind of partial with Notre Dame, right? So let's take Notre Dame out of the picture. Sure. Who do you think is going to be second in the ACC? I'm assuming they're going to say Clemson's going to be one, right? No. Oh, really? Okay. All right. Go ahead. No, I have no. I have Notre Dame coming out on top. Okay. And Clemson number two. Okay. Um, and you, you were just mentioning Duke. Um, it's either Duke or North North Carolina in three. Three, really? That's yep. interesting. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, kind of on those lines, give me your final four in the uh, in the college football playoff, but don't give me the ACC uh, pick because I I, I, mean, I know what you're going to say there, but you know. Well, now now you you picked a sore spot with me. Okay. Now the Big Ten is going to qualify to be able to play for the college football playoff after a month of guys getting beat up and bruised and, and, and you know, putting time in on the field ahead of them. Um, I think that you see, um, I want to say Auburn. I want to say Auburn come really? out of the SEC this year. Um, I, I said that, I said, I said that earlier in, in a, on another show. So I have to go with Auburn coming out of the SEC um, so what's what's that? I mean, there's not. I mean, are you just you're tired of Alabama, or I mean, what is it? Do you think they have a chance this year? I think Alabama's got to play a real schedule this year, and I think it's got to tire them out early. Okay. So when you got to play all these other teams that you normally don't play, I'm not going to call them cupcake games, but you know, whatever you want to serve up with frosting on top, <laughs> um, they're not going to have that. They're not going to have that opportunity this year. Okay. All right. So you got Auburn. Yep. Okay. Oh boy, there's not a lot of teams to choose from because then you start getting into the smaller conferences. 
Um, Big I'm 12 gonna, is a smaller conference? What's that? Big 12 is a smaller conference? Uh, I, I think I think that you, I, I, I hate to say it, but Ohio State probably gets a bid coming in a month late. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not sure who I would pick coming out of the Big Twelve. Really? No, I'm not an Oklahoma. You're not an Oklahoma fan, or you're not. I'll probably end up going Oklahoma. They're there every year. Okay. I mean, what other team? If not Oklahoma, what other team? Oh, sorry, Lisa, but not Arkansas. <laughs> um, maybe Texas A and M. Okay. Okay. Turning it around. We'll 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 see there, but. Uh, that, that wait, 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 wait. Texas A&M is in the SEC. That's right, right the SEC. So they're just qualified. I feel like the I feel like the White House press secretary now. <laughs> oh boy, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. See, I don't see anyone getting past Oklahoma. Okay. All right. Fair I think, enough. I think they're in the cat seat, catbird seat. All right. And so now I'm gonna make you choose between. Or I'm going to make you choose your ACC team. I'm Notre Dame. <laughs> that was so easy. Okay, fair enough. Oh, I'm a homer. <laughs> Chris, Chris, and, here, and here's my reason why. Being a writer, if I don't have full confidence in this team, what do I have writing about them? If I don't think that Notre Dame can go the distance, how fair is that? You know, how how fair is it to cover the team and not have faith faith that they can get to the college football playoff? But you saw Notre Dame play Duke. So what was your feeling? What was your feeling after that game? Um, my feeling was exactly what Coach had said. Actually, um, it was the first game of basically having no contact since end of last year. Okay. Uh, contact was at a minimal because of the restrictions that they had. Sure. Um, we have a whole young running back core slash new folks in the receiving core. And it's hard to get all those moving pieces. I, I don't want to sound like I'm quoting Kelly, but it's legitimate. When you look at the, when you look at the depth chart, it's crazy. You know, the, the depth chart is there's a whole bunch of folks that got to learn a new system. But, uh, I, I definitely have our freshman class is a beast. It's they're they're a they're a bunch of studs coming out of. It's going to be a good solid couple of years for Notre Dame um, with these freshmen that we have on board now. Okay, so we talked about Duke. Even though that score was nothing near your prediction. No, nope, I have um, six. I'll admit it. <laughs> okay, what about USF? I mean, like, literally, they scrambled and got this game, what, three, like, three weeks ago or something like that? That was crazy. Yeah. Um, well, the USF game is going to be is going to be an interesting aspect because um, Charlie Weiss Jr. comes and comes back to Notre Dame minus dad. So, um, so explain to folks why that is. Minus dad? Well, um, why he's coming. <laughs> he's coming. Oh, he's coming, he's coming back because he's now the offensive coordinator. Um, down at USF, right, right. So uh, um, his experience first time he reads, um, I think it's night and day. Um, you could say that he's been doing the job of offensive coordinator probably a little bit longer than Tommy Rees. Uh huh. Um, but Tommy's got that gameplay experience, and he's got those special bonds with the guys on his offense. So when you have something in common with the guys that you're coaching. There's chemistry. Sure. And, you know, Charlie Weiss Jr. coming in from FAU, this is his first year. He's still got growing pains of bringing in a system and breaking folks of old habits. Fair enough. Okay. So um, I, 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 I think that uh, I think that Tommy Reese is going to have a is going to have a great game call on Saturday. 
Nice. So uh, yeah. give, give me a score then. Oh, I wish I had my score. Um, I think I have – no. I definitely have Notre Dame winning. I think I had it something like 37-16 or something like that. Okay. Because it's important to score points because – the, and why I went with the high score in a Duke game is because despite being in the ACC, you don't know what the college football playoff committee is going to look for for style points. Right, right. So you got to go out there, pound the rock, and put points on the board. Right. And you have your first little stumbling block, per se. If, if Notre Dame did, if didn't improve and score the points they did the rest of that game, it would have been a lot worse, right? Yeah. And right. We still aren't happy. They didn't lose, but as long as these young guys learn from the previous week, I, I think, as Coach would say, it's a progression of maturity as the season grows, and championships aren't won in week one. Championships are won based upon experience of, of 11 to 12 weeks. Sure, sure. All right. Okay, so 37-16, huh? Yes, sir. All right. I like it. I like it. All right, man. Thank you so much for hanging out with me tonight. This is pretty cool. So um, are you going to invite me on sometime? Or how does that work? I got to beg to be on? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I will definitely be working with your people. My I people, yeah. It's called my wife, right? I'll my be working with your wife um, to get you on my show very, very soon. Very, very soon. So... One of the things I wanted to end with, uh, let folks know how they could check out your podcast, check out your blogs. Um, we're at Shakedown the Thunder Sports on Facebook. Okay. Um, we're Our website is www.shakedownthethundersports.com. All right. I think I got that. Hey, watch out. Wow. Boom. Hey, man. Look at that. Um, we're also on Twitter and on Facebook at the same name. Whoa. Look at that. Watch out, man. Feel the love. This is great, man. I, I didn't know how to put on the ticker thing yet, so I apologize about that. So No, that, that's great. Or no, we can just blame Augie for, for taking up your ticker, your ticker space. Thanks, Augie. You're well worth it. <laughs> All right. Thank you, George, and the whole crew at Shakedown the Thunder Sports. You know, it, it's, it's interesting because, you know, I, I've had athletes on – and I've had fans on, and and you kind of alluded to it before. I mean, I want to get the whole experience, right? I want to get the subway alumni experience. I want to get the kid got kicked out of their name. I want to get I want to get all the experiences that kind of give a well well rounded experience about what Notre Dame is. And, and, and how different Notre Dame is for each person. Yep. And I think that's why. So because the, the the idea that, you know, we're having regular everyday folks but have this love for Notre Dame is important. And who else has a better story than being a fan and then ending up in the press box? I mean, I think that's, that's you know, that's, that's been one of my favorite interviews. So, George, thank you very much. So we – do appreciate that. I want to thank everybody watching on Facebook Live. And, of course, most of all, my producer wife, Candy Rose. She's the bomb. She is the bomb, actually. Booyah! Um, this interview, along with our other interviews, are on my YouTube page at Chris Zorch 50 Guys, thank you so much. And more importantly, go Irish. Go Irish. Thanks, bro. Thank you, sir. You got it. Uh, something's supposed to happen here. Hold on. Oh, I'm stuck here. Oh, wait a minute. Whoops. These are like those outtakes? Yeah, seriously, man. Like, I think I did something wrong. Uh, here, hold on. Let's try it again. Go Irish.
<laughs> right, exactly. All right, here we go. So I, I did all that because I have like I have credits that I want to roll. So all right, man, be good. You too. Thank you. You got it. Bye. Bye. Bye.